Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm super excited to bring to you today a full head install of Bellamy Infinity Lefts. So this is our starting point. My client has medium density hair and it's mid length and we wanted to add in 20 inch infinity wefts and we're doing the shade Jet Black. So I'm actually going to be doing two sections, two rows for this install. And as you can see from my first section, I'm taking a really steep U shape. The reason that I'm doing it steep is because I wanna make sure that I'm still getting some coverage in that nape area. I don't need to add in one solid row because she doesn't have, you know, super thick hair. She doesn't have an incredibly blunt haircut either. So I am able to get away with just doing a row like this and still achieve that coverage at the nape and then throughout the rest of her hair so I'm working about an inch above the nape and then an inch above the ears for this long row so I'm doing my beaded foundation and I'm going to be using the lush pro extension silicone lined beads these are the two millimeter times four millimeter beads so they're a little bit smaller than your standard beads and I love the fact that the silicone is actually lined um, with a colored silicone so it's not white it's actually black so it's super super seamless in the hair i am doing an invisible row or a hidden row for this install so once i finish my beaded foundation i'll just go in and flip up all of those beads and pin them out the way one thing that you'll also notice within my foundation is i do have a little bit of wiggle room underneath the bead it's not super tight to the scalp i like to have the wiggle room because then i can get that weft up really really nice and high underneath the bead and I'm not worried about it slipping. Another reason is I want this install to be comfortable for my client. I don't want it to be tight. I don't want it to feel like this tension. I don't want her to be uncomfortable when she goes to sleep tonight. I want it to be as comfortable as possible from day one. So that's why I always leave this tiny bit of wiggle room between the bead and the scalp. And honestly, it really, really does feel super comfortable when you do this and you're not gonna have a client complain about it feeling too tight tightness is not good within an install because tightness can be a sign of tension um, and it can lead to tension it can lead to plucking of the hair um, it can lead to hot spots it can lead to redness of the scalp all sorts of things that we don't want within our install so as i'm kind of working throughout the install i'll always check in with my client as well and make sure that everything is feeling nice and comfortable so now back to the pinning i am pinning that first layer of weft so this weft layer is going to go underneath my foundation and i'm again using the lush pro gold clips love these because they're small enough but tight enough to really keep everything up and um, what you'll also notice is as well this weft is a little bit longer the reason that i leave it longer at the sides is because i like to fold it over at the end i will fold it over those first few beads um, and then that enables me to hide and disguise any kind of layers of weft that i go in and put in on top of the foundation so once that's all pinned down, I'll go ahead and flip down all of those beads and then just secure them with another little clip. And then now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and take my second layer, which I have pre-cut, because what you'll notice about these infinity wefts, which are from Bellamy is, they are about 42 inches in width. So it comes as one long row. So then that gives you the capability to go ahead and cut those wefts to size. That's one reason that I really like the infinity weft or the genius weft it's because it's almost like a hand tied except you can cut it so you have that really really nice flatness um, and super super small spine like you get with a hand tied but you also have that freedom to cut it and not worry about it shedding so now I'm going in with my third layer of infinity weft and again just pinning that all down and what you'll notice is I set this back from that first bead because I really want my corners to lay really really nice and flat so I do actually set this back a little bit like you can see here and then that way I can then fold my weft over so it means that I only have two layers on that first bead I like to keep the first bead as light as possible because this area here is always going to be the the finer density area regardless of whether your client has really thick hair or really fine hair that front piece here that's close to the hairline is always going to be finer in density so it's important that we put 
as minimum weight on that area as possible. So now I'm anchoring that all down. What you'll notice is I start on that third pocket and then I work my way to the first and then I go back in and begin my blanket stitches. And I make sure that I do these all the way around and I make sure that I'm actually catching all those different layers as well. So like you can see here, the little arrow is showing you all those layers and I want to make sure that my stitching is going through every single layer not missing one if you miss a layer um, it can sabotage your install a little bit because you might find that you might have layers that will slip and they're not secure and then also this little arrow is showing you that we want to make sure that we're really locking down all the ends of those wefts as well because we have cut them so all the different layers where they end for example that area there it's the piece that I folded over so I want to make sure that I'm locking down all those little end pieces as well because again if we don't lock down those end pieces it can um, sabotage your install a little bit because it might mean that those bits can flip up they can irritate your client it's easier for them to catch it with a hairbrush and then it might affect the stitching um, it could unravel all the different things that could go wrong so it's really important that we lock all those little pieces and all those layers together nice and evenly so now you can see this little layer here i'm really making sure that i lock that with that blanket stitch and now finishing off this row i'm going in and just anchoring that corner down so you can see it's really locked into place and i do that by doing a closed blanket stitch and then now I'm just gonna do my tie off. So I'm dropping my needle down through all of those layers of weft, wrapping the thread around my needle three times, and then pulling that up to secure. And what you'll see is I've created that triple knot. And then I'll pull my needle through and behind the wefts, and then I'm just gonna tie it three times before trimming it. And then taking all the clips out and i'm just going to do a little flip up for you guys so you can see that lovely hidden row i love hidden rows especially with infinity wefts um i find it's a really great way to distribute all those different layers of the infinity weft evenly so it doesn't feel really bulky on top and it doesn't feel bulky underneath it feels really nice and even and also you're hiding those beads so you don't have any visible points of attachment Okay, so now we are moving on to that second row. As you can see, my second row is gonna sit higher on the head because I wanna make sure that I'm getting coverage all the way up. So my second row sits about an inch above the first row um, at the ear. And then what you'll notice is where I did have that really steep U, when it comes to that point in the back, it sits about two inches above it because I wanna make sure that I'm getting good coverage at the crown as well, so that when I flip down, I don't have a huge disconnect between the natural hair and between the extensions. So I do find that if I'm doing two rows like this, this one will sit higher, um, but I like that. And then also if they have the density for it, you it does allow you to do that. If my client had maybe finer density, I might drop this down a little bit lower um, or maybe if she has a double crown, I might have to drop it down a little bit lower. Always bearing in mind how your client wears their hair, um, their growth patterns, all the different things because we want to remember that that will affect our sectioning and that will affect massively where we place those wefts. So now I am just going in and securing that top um, layer, securing everything down with my stitches. I'm doing all the same stitches that I did for that first row. And you can see that arrow is showing you all the different layers. So for this, she had the same amount of layers as the first row because I actually did one pack on each row which is 80 grams so i did 80 grams on each row um, which gave her a total of 160 grams so then now making sure that i lock down all of those little pieces of weft my stitches go through the pockets of hair the pockets of hair are going to be the hair that are either side of the bead my stitches also go through the um wefts themselves as well so in between the pockets of hair i'll do a stitch just through the wefts and then also above the bead i'll do a stitch just above the wefts so that's why my stitches sit really closely together because we are working with so many different layers we don't have that extra reinforcement that we have with a machine weft such as a volume weft or a flex weft so we almost have to create that ourselves and i do that by doing all these little extra stitches it also helps to create really really nice 
uniform stitches as well. So I'm going through the pocket of hair, but never through the bead. I'm never going through the bead because I want to be able to offer my clients what's called a move-up appointment. So I offer my clients move-up appointments every four to six weeks where I just unclamp the bead and push it back up into place. So now I am just going over my anchor stitches exactly the same as what I did the last time, wrapping my needle, um, my thread around my needle three times and pulling it up to secure. One little trick that I like to do is just tuck my needle behind the wefts because then when I go to tie the thread three times, it means that that knot, that triple knot, is actually going to slip behind the wefts, which is what I want. I don't want it to sit on top of the wefts because then again, more likely that your client is going to catch that with the hairbrush. So the more that I can hide those stitches and those knots, the better. So now I'm just unpinning it and doing a nice little flip up again so you can see that hidden row. So back to the maintenance program, um, I would do my initial install and then depending on their density, if they have fine hair, I'll do a move up at the four week mark. If they have medium to thick hair, it might be more like the six week mark. For fine hair, I'll do one move up, and then again, I will do a full removal and reinstall. And then for medium to thick density hair, I will do two move ups before having to do a full reinstall. Um, that's typically what my client's maintenance schedule looks like. Some people prefer to come in sooner and some people will go longer. So I do have clients that actually go 10 weeks um, and at the 10 week mark, they will just do a full removal and reinstall and that just works better for their schedule. I'm open to that. I don't mind that as long as they're looking after their wefts and as long as their naturally dense, natural density can accommodate um, the weft for that period of time without having to move it up or push it back up into place. Um, my number one priority is always to keep my client's natural hair as healthy as possible and also their scalp. So now finishing off, um, I went in with the Babyliss Pro Curl and I, 32 millimeter. This is the finished result. I love the curl that it creates. It's just like a really, really soft wave. Um, and look at that shine. So this is the shade Jet Black. It's the most gorgeous deep black shade. Um, and it suits my client so much. She just looks stunning. She looks like Snow White. I'm obsessed. Um, and we did 20 inches, two rows, 160 grams. I hope you enjoyed this super detailed video and please don't forget to like and subscribe.